training was about using DBT and ACT as sort of universal treatments for emotional disorders. DBT is dialectical behavioral therapy. ACT is acceptance and commitment therapy. Both of these therapies kind of address the issue of emotional avoidance. People avoid emotions and develop all kinds of techniques that aren't always helpful to deal with avoiding emotions. These therapies are realizing that acceptance is a big thing, that you have to accept your emotions, you have to accept your thoughts and feelings. So it focuses on mindfulness, just being aware, alert, not operating on autopilot, being more conscious of thoughts and feelings, observing and accepting emotions. That goes along with my, how do you be mind, how are you mindful of your emotion? How do you accept it? How do you stop pushing it away? There's also cognitive behavioral therapy that's addressing mindfulness now. The concepts that I have, I'm taking all, I did DBT for a long time in Willoughby. We haven't ever been able to get it off the ground, but there were a set of skills and modules that people went through. We would have three modules, eight ses sessions each module. And the modules included two sessions of mindfulness before each one, distress tolerance, emotion regulation, and interpersonal effectiveness. And each of those mindfulness was a set of skills. Marsha Linehan, it felt like, you know, it's most, it's very important to have these skills, something that you can <laughs> have at hand to use rather, it was developed for borderline personality disorder mainly to help anchor people and help them deal with their emotions, but it was very useful for all clients. I kind of know the skills like the back of my hand because I did the groups for so long. I just thought I would share with you some of the things that even when you're not doing a group, the things that I seem to be gravitating most to with my individual clients, the things that are, are that I found most useful that I can just integrate in, in my my sessions all the time. The big thing is it kind of goes along with acceptance of emotions because most people come in, they say, oh, I got so much anxiety, I can't handle it, I'm having panic attacks, I'm so stressed and you have to, you know, how do I get rid of this? I have to get rid of it. The goals are to get rid of my anxiety or to be happy. So their thoughts are I have to get rid of all this stuff. And I'm finding that the first thing I try to do is let people understand their emotions. You know, that emotions are the biggest thing that helps people and it's a part of validation too is when I tell them that they can't control their thoughts and feelings and it's a little bit different in cognitive behavioral therapy you're like change your thoughts and feelings you know if you change the way you think you're going to change your feelings and and there's some truth to that but what we found and this is where ACT really was helpful to me all the research they do that you really can't, thoughts happen so automatically, the way our brains work, and there's just so many automatic associations that are met, that happen so fast, that you can't control that, that goes. Those thoughts pop into your head. The same thing with feelings. Feelings happen instantaneously. They're just perceptions that are in the automatic back of your mind. They're just gonna come over you. You can't stop that feeling from being there. So what's really helpful to understand is, hey, these things are gonna happen automatically. You can't stop them. That itself is validating to people. It's their experience because they think that they shouldn't be having these thoughts. They've got to get rid of those thoughts. They've got to get rid of those feelings. And the more they try to get rid of them, the more they hang on. In DBT, we call it um, secondary emotions. I don't like this feeling. I don't like these thoughts. And then you get mad at yourself for having the thoughts and feelings. And it just keeps it going and going. If you can say, OK, let me just accept the thoughts and feelings that I have, and not make things worse. So I talk a little bit more about the nature of emotions. They're physiological responses. You get emotion-driven thoughts. There's thoughts that kind of your mind gets going. You get a physiological response in your body. 
and you get an action urge. You know, there's always an urge attached to it. So if you're angry, you know, you want to scream or shout or, you know, throw something or put somebody down. If you're sad, you just want to stay in bed and pull the covers up over your head. If you're afraid, you want to avoid. So trying to help people to understand the nature of emotions, all the, the different components of emotions is helpful. That's a, a big thing that I start with usually is under and I'll and also say things like um, emotions are like the weather because they come and they go and people have to you know it's like I have this anxiety it's 24 7 so I talk about emotions are constantly changing you know sometimes it's like this hurricane and then that goes you know blows away and the sun comes out for a little while and then it's a drizzly rain that metaphor helps people to realize that you're not feeling to understand you're not going to be feeling the same emotion 24 7 it's not constant it doesn't go on forever even though it seems like that to people that you're you're going to get relief from that emotion feelings it's themselves don't last that, that physical sensation that comes over you, they don't last for 60 to 90 seconds or something because your body has to get, get some equilibrium. So it can't maintain the intensity. If you get this feeling of fear all of a sudden and it just comes over you, that um, adrenaline goes through your body and it dissipates. So that feelings will come up like a wave and then they have to dissipate and they come down. It doesn't mean they're not gonna come back 10 minutes later or five minutes later, but the feelings are gonna come and they're gonna go. And the key is that when they're up there, you can't stop that from happening. You have to accept that this is a very natural thing that you can't push it away. It's happening in your body, you can't control it. So the more you fight it, you're making it worse. If you say, I shouldn't have this feeling, it's got to go away, then you're adding another feeling on top of that feeling. If you're just aware and you ride out the wave and you know that it's uncomfortable, but it'll come and it'll go. And that is so helpful for people. They don't, they really haven't looked at it that way. And so I just have them kind of, and that's where we talk about mindfulness. Mindfulness fits in with everything, and mindfulness is just choosing where you want to put your attention is the most basic way to define that. Where are you going to put your attention? If you're, you're not operating on an autopilot, you're choosing where you want your attention to be. So if you put your attention on your feelings, and that moment and just notice what it's like in your body and notice that your heart is beating really fast or notice that your muscles are tense. Notice that you have pressure in your head. I try to help people say, How, where do you feel that in your body? And if you just pay attention to your body, it kind of helps get the thoughts out of your head because usually your thoughts are kind of going and you're ruminating and that's making it worse. It adds to it. So mindfulness to that emotion in your body. Then I say, you know, it's going to come and it's going to go. <laughs> and so along with that, validation is an important DBT concept. And of course, basic counseling 101, you know, is it's basic people skills. But validating is really making people feel that you understand their experience. There's nothing else. Every time I'm stuck, I, I just go back to validation, validation because nothing helps more than letting people know that you understand their experience. Validation doesn't necessarily mean you have to agree with the person. You know, it's, you might say, I wouldn't feel that way, that's stupid, you know, in a situation like that. But it's like you're trying to say from your, your experience, from your standpoint, this is understandable. The more you can communicate that to the other, to the person, it helps to bring down their emotion. It's just something if somebody is really upset about something and they talk about it and they realize you're getting it, you're understanding that, it, it brings that emotion down right away. Um, there, Marsha Linehan talks about six levels of validation. One of them is always to stay mindful and pay attention. Try to focus on what that person is saying and disengage from judgmental thoughts. That's a big thing in mindfulness is trying not to be judgmental, just seeing what is. 
because we, we so automatically start to judge, you know, this is good, this is bad, evaluate this situation, form an opinion. So when you're, if you're trying to validate, you have to notice those judgmental thoughts and try to stay away from them and say, let me not judge, let me just kind of listen to what this person is saying and try to understand. Let them know that you understand what they're feeling, you know, just kind of that parroting back or whatever, however you want to say it. Level three is stating the inarticulated. A lot of times people don't really know what they're feeling. You feel odd and you have to try to guess. You create a hypothesis about what they're not telling you. You know, you're hearing all this stuff and you'll say something like, I wonder if this is going on or I'm wondering if you were feeling this. You have to be willing to be wrong because they may say, no, that's not it at all. But it's really interesting when you say, I'm wondering, and you just see their eyes kind of light up. And it's like, yeah, you know, that's what I'm feeling. So that, I, I think I have to do that a lot, is just kind of helping people to piece together their experience when they're confused about it and create your own hypothesis. And that can, that's a form of validation would be very helpful. Other thing that I use a lot is validating in terms of their personal experience. You know, when you get to know a client, and especially our clients that have had a lot of trauma, you may, you know, say, wow, you know, I, boy, I could see why you overreacted and that, you know, based on knowing your situation, which is unique to you, I can see how you felt that way or why you kind of freaked out, you know, there was a, a storm or something and your house had burned down in the storm and, and you hear thunder and you go berserk where the, another person might say, you know, it's only thunder. So everybody has their unique experiences that make them react to situations. So if you can understand the context of their life and say, I can see how that's true for you, where other people might say, well, that's crazy. I don't see why you feel that way. That's very helpful. The other thing is validating in terms of biology. Well, you have ADHD. That's how you know your brain works. It's really hard for you to focus, or it's really hard for you to pay attention. So I can see why, you know, you miss that particular thing. Or you know, geez, you have diabetes. You know, maybe your blood sugar was a little low that day. Or my goodness, you didn't get a good night's sleep. So it's validating for them to say that you know some. Sometimes there are other factors that are, are allowing, helping them to feel this way and they're like, wow, yeah, that's cool too. So it's kind of personalizing that validation in, in different ways. The other thing is normalizing and that is communicating to them even though somebody, you know, their situation isn't the exact same thing. Boy. I would feel that way if I were in your shoes. People will say, I can't believe I'm crazy for feeling this way, and is that crazy? And I'm like, oh my God, no, if that was happening to me, I'd feel that way. Most people would feel that way. You know, you didn't respond. So that is just normalizing, finding a situation that's just normal for all human beings to feel and validating that they have those feelings too. And then radical genuineness. It's just being genuine, being careful not to make that person fragilize. Don't fragilize the person or don't sound, you know, when you're validating sometimes, you know, you're trying so hard to understand that you can sound a little like, oh my goodness, that's horrible. You know, I might have a tendency to do that and make them feel fragile and out of control or condescend or not talk down to the person, but also not make them feel weak. So, but validation, it just comes in in every skill you use all the time. You're always trying to validate. And that's a big DBT thing. It's one thing to validate somebody else, but then they put, put themselves down. Validation is a term I use all the time with, with clients and try to explain to them what it is, that they can validate other people in their life, and they also know when, then when they're feeling invalidated when somebody's not understanding their things or saying you shouldn't feel that way or why do you feel that way. So if, if a client understands validation, 
because you model that for them, they can um, also understand when they're being invalidated and they can say, wow, you know, that's, that per you know, it's not my fault, that person did misunderstand me or whatever. Part of that understanding emotions is, um, is a beginning in emotion regulation. You have to be able to understand the emotions, you have to be mindful to the emotions. Um, this little paper here, I, I pulled to, I found this task, the tasks of emotion regulation. So that, I thought that was kind of interesting to pull together. What does it really mean to, when you're trying to regulate your emotions? So an overall task is to re reorient attention or turn away from the emotion-driven thoughts. Putting your attention on your body is one way of getting away from the emotion-driven thoughts. It's a big thing that I learned in ACT is the automatic thoughts that just start <coughs> churning out. People are always, I have these racing thoughts, I have these racing thoughts. And when I say, I know, you just can't help it, you know, that's how the mind works. The mind is just automatically, the mind comes up with doom and gloom. You know, I call it radio doom and gloom. There's always this doom and gloom, you know, going on in your mind. These negative thoughts come in your mind, and the more you try to push them away, the more they stay there. The strategy is, okay, if they're going to be there, and you can't control them or push them away, what you, can con what you can do is turn your attention away from those thoughts. And that's where mindfulness comes in. It's like, uh, these thoughts are in my head, but how can I get my attention away from those thoughts and turn my attention to something else? It's not quite the same thing as get rid of those thoughts, get rid of those thoughts, or you grab onto those thoughts. If you grab onto those thoughts that, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, I'm a terrible person, or I did something wrong, or I can't believe that person did that to me, that we get so, we get hooked on those thoughts. And they just keep going and going, and they increase your emotional intensity. So when, when these thoughts come in and you get hooked on them, the strategy is, to say, wait a minute, is this helpful? If I stay hooked on this, I'm gonna keep ruminating about this and ruminating about this. So you have to find a way to unhook from those thoughts or defuse from those thoughts. When you're hooked, you're fused, but you know, this is the thought I have and I believe it 100%, it's there. I can't get rid of it. So your strat the strategy is how do you defuse? How do you unhook? How do you kind of, let those thoughts just kind of go by putting them in the clouds and letting them float away. So that's a whole a concept that I work with clients on. We have to learn to do this. You know, it's an ongoing process. How can we learn to unhook from thoughts when they're really disturbing and they're not helpful for us and they're keeping our emotions going and going? There's so many techniques that you can use, guided imagery to kind of help the thoughts go by, diffusion, different strategies for diffusion, picture different thoughts going by, or you know, thing that picture, you could put the thought on a stream and have it floating by. I tell clients to be aware, it's like to, to get some distance from those thoughts. So one um, metaphor that I use a lot of times is this stuff is going on, pretend like you're in the balcony of the theater and all these things that are going on, the scenarios in your mind or these situations are on the stage and you're just stepping back and watching it. You know, so you're detaching somewhat from that thought, detaching from that situation. Um, or you can say to somebody, I'm having the thought that I'm not good enough, I'm incompetent, I'm an idiot. That's what people say. And when you say that, it seems true. I'm an idiot. When you step back and you, you tell the client, why don't you say, I'm having the thought that I'm an idiot. So it gives you a little bit of distance from that. And then step, do it again, you can say, I notice that I'm having the thought that I'm an idiot. You're taking it even further. It's like getting to watching your mind in a way and noticing that your mind is generating these thoughts 
and you can step back and notice it and watch your mind without totally attaching to it and believing it. That's sort of the strategy of diffusion. It's not easy to do, and especially if you're upset about something and it's a, you know, it'll stay on your mind. And so I tell people, yeah, you know, you can defuse for a little bit. You know, maybe you can unhook for that for a little while, and then maybe an hour later it'll be back or it'll be back. And it'll take time if it's an upsetting situation. It'll eventually kind of play itself out. That's another thing of concept of mindfulness is being aware of those thoughts that are going on, on in your mind and just noticing them and deciding I can either turn my attention to them. So if you're trying to regulate your attention, it's how do you reorient from those emotion-driven thoughts. What I like about ACT, which it gave me more than DBT, was with DBT we always talked about distracting. Find something to distract yourself. Read a book, clean the house, watch a movie. And the, those are fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But a lot of times what I found with clients, if you start with that, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. I found that when I do this act thing that your mind is automatically doing that and it's very hard to, to distract yourself and you have to kind of practice unhooking and to give them that explanation first, it, it feels more validating anyway because when you tell them to distract it's almost like you're minimizing sometimes and you think it's easy to just distract and do something else. You know, it'll help you to get out of the house or to do something like that. So, so the first thing is to focus on defusing a little bit and then distracting. How do you bring down an emotion? You know, what you want to do if you're really cranked up and anxious, the task is to kind of calm your, bring that physiological response down. And if you're sad or depressed, it's like, you know, how do you energize yourself and bring it up a little bit? So you're, you're either going to want to, you know, it's looking at that physiological arousal that goes with the emotion. So if somebody is, is really distressed in the moment, you know, it's like how do you pause, take a breath, how do you come down from that distress so that you can be stop mood dependent behavior. In DBT they call it, you know, acting on your emotions, going with whatever you feel like, you know, if you're mad at somebody, you're screaming, fighting, creating a, a big thing. If you're depressed, you're not getting out of the house for a week, you're staying in bed. The concept there is if you can calm down, the first step is calming down, you're not going to, it'll give you the chance that you're not going to act on your emotions. So then you can go to the next step, stop yourself from doing whatever the emotions urge you to do. So when I talked about every emotion has an urge, if you're on autopilot, you're going to act according to that urge. If you, you're mindful, you're going to say, you're going to stop and you're going to say, okay, I'm not going to act on that urge. I'm going to try to calm my emotions down, consider the consequences, you know, kind of get, we call it wise mind, get out of emotional, you know, you have emotional mind, rational mind, kind of uh, combining the two. Identify important values and goals so that once you do that, you know, you're calming yourself and not acting on it. What can you do instead? What's important to you? You know, how, where can you turn your attention to? right now and identifying things you know uh, yeah all this stuff is going on but you know it's really important that you're a good parent you know your kids are really important to you how can you focus on what you need to do for your kids right now your goal is to really keep this job so you really want to you know stay in school or keep this job to find things that are really important to them and that's a big thing that ACT does too they really focus on the commitment is, is finding things that are important it, it's kind of like an anchor and a guide for people to have. So what's the point of controlling your emotions if you don't know where you're going or what, where you're headed? If you can get them back to, you know, once we kind of regulate ourselves, what's the purpose of that? Where are we going to go now? It also helps people 
to tolerate difficult situations. So many of our clients, the realities of their, their lives and their stressors can be pretty overwhelming. You just bring them back, you know, what's, what are your values, what's really important to you, that they can put their attention there and it helps to, to guide them and focus them somewhat. How can you, you know, just not get carried away by that emotional storm so that you're acting on your mood dependent behavior, you're acting on these emotions. Realize that you have to find a way to just anchor yourself in the moment. That's another mindfulness thing. So it's like if a client is really distressed and really upset, let's drop anchor is, is a good technique to use. And dropping anchor just means Kind of bringing yourself to the here and now. An old technique we've I've used for years is just count five things you see in the room. I don't know if all of you guys have heard that before. You know, it's a count five things you can see and notice right now. See if you can hear five different sounds. How can you just get to the present? Look at me here. We're here and now, right now so that you're not out there with all this other distress. So it just kind of takes some deep breaths, dropping anger, just calming yourself and bringing yourself to the present. That is a, an important regulation skill. The half smile is a um, DBT technique that everybody thought was really stupid, but there's actually research that when you <laughs> smile, or even she calls it a half smile, it actually stimulates your brain to calm down and to kind of be slightly more positive. The technique was if you're in the middle of a storm, half smile. And even just telling the client to half smile, which sounds stupid because they're talking about all this distress, they have to laugh about it, you know, that this is going to make it go away. It's an interesting little thing you can throw out. I just did that with a client this morning. I mean, she has a horrible circumstance and she just started laughing laughing with the half smile thing and she noticed that it did make her feel better. I always bring up please master. Uh, this is sort of like what I was talking about validating the um, biological aspects. Validating that you, you're vo more vulnerable to negative emotion when your body is out of sorts, you know, when you're not, when you haven't had enough sleep, when you're physically ill, when you're hungry, you haven't had anything to eat, mood altering when you're using alcohol or drugs, you know, you're, you're going to be vulnerable to stuff. If you didn't have enough exercise. So the please stands for, the P stands for physical illness, E is a balanced eating, A avoid, avoid mood altering substances, S is sleep, and E is get exercise. So I think this is really important. I do bring this up with clients a lot and it just kind of dawns on them that yeah, I haven't been sleeping, no wonder I'm feeling like this, you know. And it's something that is pretty concrete that you you know you can use and that people will say, yeah. Because even if, you know, if your situation is bad and you can't change it, you have a lot of stress, by paying attention to what you can do to help yourself feel physically better is really important. And the master part of that, that also decreases your vulnerability to negative emotion. When you feel like you've accomplished something, that you feel good about yourself. The technique was try to do something, one little thing each day to make yourself feel better. Something hard that you've been putting off doing. You know, make a phone call that you've been avoiding or with some clients, just do your dishes, you know. <laughs> just do one thing and do something hard. And when you do something hard, it just makes you feel better. So the con you know, that concept is how do you decrease your vulnerability to negative emotion and you can be consciously aware of things that will help you do that. The other thing to decrease that vulnerability is to build positive experiences and it's like trying to tell the client, Let, you know, just try to find something, some little positive thing that you can be mindful of because we're not mindful of the positives. Our minds are like Velcro for the negative and Teflon for the positive. You know, the positive just floats right away. 
So I, I tell people like, you know, what if you just, especially people that are really in distress, just go look out the sun, see that it's a sunny day, notice the spring flowers, something simple like that, and bring it to their attention, things that they can be mindful of. Okay, we're out of time. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Kathy. <laughs> All these papers here, but. <laughs>